Hi! So here on my channel I'm doing videos about how to program Linux drivers for over 3 years now. But I have never contributed to any major open source project. At least until now. Because with kernel 6.8 a driver which was written by me will be included in the Linux kernel. So finally I have some street credibility. In today's video I want to talk about the process of contributing a driver to Linux and about my experience with it. So let's start. First let me tell you how I got the idea of contributing a Linux driver. And it all began with a mail I got from a viewer of mine channel. So this viewer asked me if I could help him interface the MCP2221 chip from Microchip. So here you can see this chip, basically it's a USB to I2C UART protocol converter with four programmable GPIOs. My viewer only was interested in um, yeah, controlling the GPIOs. And the thing was for the UART interface there was already a driver, but for the I2C and GPIO there was no driver. The cool thing is, so the viewer bought me a chip, a sample, so I could play around with it and I had some time to do it, so I found out the I2C and the GPIOs were controlled over the USB HID protocol. And in case you attach a USB device with an HID endpoint and there is no driver for it, in Linux it will be mounted as a HID raw device. So if we take a look in the dev folder and search for HID, you can see there are multiple HID device files in this folder. And over these devices you can interface with the chip by using just open, read, write and close. So this is very convenient. Finally we managed to control the GPIOs and everything was fine until a came kernel update came. So a few months later I got a uh, mail from the same um, viewer telling me okay the program is not working any longer and the reason for this is the device doesn't appear in slash dev as an HRT raw device any longer. And I found out the reason for this is because there is a driver available now for the HID interface of the MCP2221 chip. The workaround for my viewer was quite simple. All he had to do was to remove the driver and then our old um, program still worked. But I went to the Linux kernel um, and checked if there was a driver and I found this driver here, the HID MCP2221. And this driver basically, if you now plug in the MCP2221, you will get one more I2C interface and one more GPIO chip available on your system. And I thought, hey, I have a very similar device lying around at home. I have this MCP2200, which is a USB to UART protocol converter with eight programmable GPIOs. And here as well, for the UART part, there is already a driver, but for the GPIO part, there isn't. So my idea was, okay, this chip is even simpler than the MCP2221, so maybe I could create a driver for it and contribute it to the Linux kernel. The next step was to create a driver for the MCP2200 HID interface. And yeah, this was first pretty straightforward, so what I did was I um, created a standalone Linux kernel module as I'm showing you my tutorials and I implemented all the functionality. So therefore I need to gain some knowledge about the HID framework in the Linux kernel and also about the GPIO chip um, yeah, framework, but the GPIO chip implementation I knew quite well from videos I've done on my channel and the HID implementation was not so hard to get into it because on the one hand I could take a look at the existing driver for the MCP22221 and I could copy some of the stuff from there and also if you know one kernel um, yeah if you know one implementation for example like how to implement a PCI device implementing an HID device is very similar to it for example. So I wrote the um, yeah the uh, the kernel module and the testing first I did on my local machine, but later I 
grabbed a Linux kernel, compiled the whole Linux kernel, emulated it with QMU and passed the device through with USB pass through. So if you're interested, interesting in how to do this, I could do a video about USB pass through and QMU. This would not be a problem. Okay, so I did some tests and then I thought I was finished and now I can contribute my code. But how to, can you contribute to the Linux kernel, I thought? Well, the, I, I found the answer on YouTube. So here is a video from FOSTEM 2010. It's a talk by a well-known kernel maintainer by Greg Crow Hartman. And the title is Write and Submit Your First Linux Kernel Patch. In this talk, he takes you through the whole process of contributing a patch to the Linux kernel. And also he shows you some very useful scripts which are included with the Linux kernel, which you can use for helping you doing the work. So I really recommend you watching this video. And of course, I will put a link to it in the description of this video. Okay, so now I could create my first kernel patch. So I created my first kernel patch and um, yeah, sent it to the Linux kernel mailing list. And here you can see the first patch I've sent. So every patch must have this subject line um, explaining what the patch is about, then a small description, and then the sign of buy tag. So in the sign of buy tag, you're naming who created this kernel patch. And in order to get the patch merged into the Linux kernel, you need a reviewed buy tag. So at least one maintainer must take a look at your code and say, okay, this code looks good, this is okay, we can merge it in the Linux kernel. And here you can see the files I have changed. And down here you can see the source of the patch, basically. And the thing was, <laughs> I created the, mod, um, the driver as a standalone kernel module, so I had to download the Git repository of the Linux kernel. I have to add my files, and then I had to use git add command to add all the files I've changed. And in my patch, I forgot one file or I forgot to add one file I have changed. And this make, made the whole patch uncompilable. And on the Linux um, kernel, there is a kernel test robot, which is which will automatically take your patch, patch in the kernel and try to compile everything. And if it fails, you will get a message. So I got this message here. Hi, Johannes, kernel test robot notices the following build errors. And the build error here is that this define isn't declared anywhere because I forgot to add a file in which I have added this define. And then I panicked because I heard from the Linux kernel that the tone can be quite rough and I as a newbie contributed a non-compilable kernel patch. So I was really afraid um, I will be called out by some other maintainers. So I hurried and I've created a patch for my patch, which, which should fix it, but I hurried too much. I So basically I copied this line here and this should be called USB device ID MCP2200, but I forgot to change this and I, I only changed the number here. So this patch was also garbage. But then something happened which was really cool and really nice. No one shouted at me. They, I got response to this, but the response was extremely polite and extremely constructive. So the people tried to help me submit a compilable patch and they not say, ah, you're too stupid to do a patch. No, they really helped me. So, and another really cool thing is, which I'm not so much used to is, if you're submitting something to the Linux kernel, for example, people you never heard of will take a look at your code and will give you constructive criticism on your code and they will tell you things you can improve. So just take a look at this comment I got on my code. Here I get really constructive um, criticism. For example, this one. Here I have some includes and here I have the comment, many maintainers prefer alphabetical order for includes. Okay, that's something I can improve in my software. Or here I'm declaring an enum with some yeah status codes basically. And here the question is maybe would it make more sense to use define instead of an enum here, which is a valid point. Or down here, this is interesting because here I'm locking a mutex 
and then I'm dynamically allocating memory. In the comment here, allocation could be done before the lock, which absolutely makes sense because if you are locking a mutex and then you are allocating memory dynamically, the memory allocation will take an amount of time and in this time the mutex is locked. So it's better to keep the critical section as short as possible and do the lock after the um, memory allocation. So I got a good valid um, or I got a lot of improvements from various maintainers. So I've created, so I took this feedback, incorporated or added it to my Linux kernel patch and then submitted once again. But this time before I submitted it, I actually did testing at some testing if what I've committed is really compilable. <laughs> so after this commit here, this was the last one, which was not compilable. <laughs> and yeah, so it took me seven versions of my kernel until everything or until all maintainers were happy, which took a look at it. So all the time I got some valid criticism or valid things to improve. And so uh, with the seventh version of my code, a maintainer finally gave me the refute by tag. So this means, okay, this looks good. Now it can be merged into the Linux kernel. But now you need to um, get the go from the subsystem maintainer. And I was still missing it. So in September, on the 22th of December, I got the refute by tag and then after two months later, I still haven't heard anything from the subsystem maintainer. So I wrote this commit here asking basically what's the status um, of the patch. And then I got the okay from the subsystem maintainer and he even apologized for the delay, which is quite cool. And, he, and also my um, patch was applied for Linux kernel 6.8. So currently we have Linux kernel 6.7, but when 6.8 will arrive, my patch is included. So here you can see this is yeah the GitHub mirror of the Linux kernel. And here we can see my patch. So the file name is hrdmcp2200.c and the copyright is from me, Johannes Reut. And yeah, this is basically my, my contributed driver. If you're interested in, you can take a look at it. And when Linux kernel 6.8 will arrive, a driver of mine is included, which is really cool. So that's my story about how to contribute a driver to the Linux kernel. It was a very interesting and very good experience. It was cool that people you don't know give you constructive criticisms and tell you things you can approve to the kernel. They can even be quite interesting discussions in how to do various things. And I have to say, um, my experience was that on the Linux kernel mailing list, people are very friendly and very polite. So this was a really great experience. And if I find another device for which there is no driver, I will absolutely contribute or I will absolutely try to um, submit another patch with a new driver. But one thing I also have to mention, it took some time until my driver or it took some time at work until my patch actually was accepted. So you can see here my first patch was done in June or, and the merge was done in November. So yeah, it was, it took me about yeah, almost five months until my patch was accepted and it also took me quite a bit of work to get into the state. So I can, so I understand now a little bit better why some companies don't, um, yeah, don't bring their patches upstream or because it, it takes some effort to do so. But nevertheless, I would say it was a very interesting experience to submit a patch in the Linux kernel and I hope this won't be my last patch for it. Yeah, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.